Well, we're back at Walt Disney World's Port Orleans French Quarter Resort. One of my favorites on all of Walt Disney World's property. We're going to spend a few days and nights here, so come on along with us. We'll just park right in here while we go in to registration and check in. And right away, you can see why I like Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter so much. One, it's the architecture. I love this style of architecture. Two, the grounds are fantastic. And three, well, there's no drunks laying around. And check it out. They got magic doors. Yeah, look, it open. Oh, Jim's inside there. I'll explain the doors here. Because operation of the doors is your first Disney with Disabilities hack. Yeah, they got a button right there. But that only opens this small door, and some wheelchairs are wider than that. You know, like mine is. It'd be better if we opened the big doors. So, if you go around to the back, there's a button there. And what the button does, is it operates the double doors. So there's plenty of room to get inside. And inside the building, it's the same kind of a deal. They got the button for that small door there. But way over on the other side where Jim was standing, see that little brass button? That's for the double doors. Alright, so let's go inside. Inside, you'll find registration and check-in, also the concierge desk. It's also where you'll find the Jackson Square store and the arcade. On the other side, it's food. Somehow, we've managed to never eat at Scat Cats, although it's right there in the lobby. And we'll talk about the Sasagula Float Works and Food Factory in a little bit. But first, let's head over to registration and check-in, because we didn't use online check-in this time. Something about a block of rooms and somebody's wedding, that kind of stuff. I'll cover that stuff in a couple of minutes, too. There is a nice little waiting area for kids, too, right in this same area with Disney stuff playing on the screen. And according to Mayor Jim, this is home to the only hidden Tigger on property. Now, he says it's right there, and I'll let you draw your own conclusions. As for me, I guess I can see it. Since, as I said, we got a block of rooms for somebody's wedding, Disney decided to put us all on the first floor of Building 1. You know, as far as you can get from the center of the resort. Last time we were in Building 7, the other end of the resort. When parking, you really do have to follow the signs because all of the ramps don't line up with the sidewalk where you'd expect them to. And in case you're not lucky enough to get the first floor, there are elevators that will take you to the upper two floors. But as I said, we were lucky enough to all be on the first floor. And the good news is, they're done renovations. All the rooms are renovated! So I guess now you don't have to wear your hard hat or high visibility vest, which it looked like everybody was wearing the last time we were here. Yeah, last time we were here, they were actually working on the floor above us and the floor below us. So they wake us up at 8 o'clock in the morning to the sound of hammering on concrete. It went right through the walls. It wasn't a fun stay last time. But this time, apparently Disney even knew about my memory lapses because they put me in room 1111. Visually, there's not a lot of difference between the renovated room we had this time and the unrenovated room we had a couple of months ago. Which is a good thing. They're not losing their character. Apparently here, Disney was able to put in the laminate floors and raise the beds without making the whole room look generic. This time, they were even able to hold on to the massive headboards that I liked so much in the last room we had. And aside from the floors, it appears the most visible change came to the bathrooms, especially in the handicap accessible room where there's no longer a curtain. Now there's a pocket door between the full-size bathroom and the bedroom area. In the area where it used to be a place to hang up your clothes in the sink, well, they've moved the toilet over to that location. And it does have plenty of handrails. And the handicap accessible sink has no obstructions underneath. They've also taken out the wall that used to separate the shower and toilet from the sink area in the bathroom. And that's been replaced by, well, nothing. It's really wide open in here. Now the really large shower stall has plenty of handrails, an adjustable height handheld shower head, and of course, a built-in seat. Unlike some of the other resort renovations, French Quarter still has safes in the room. And the friendly housekeeping staff knows how to make you feel welcome. For those of you who can't wait for this particular part of the video, here's the floor layout thanks to my buddy Dave over at yourfirstvisit.net. I mean, let's face it, at night, all the rooms pretty much look like this. 
So let's head back up to the main building and find out what makes French Quarter different from all the other resorts. I mean, aside from Jim. Well, to start with, there's always music in a lobby with a piano player that never gets tired. And there's also no sit-down restaurant here, although there used to be. You remember those doors we saw inside of Scat Cats? Well, according to my ROM, or really old map, that used to be a sit-down restaurant called Bon Famille's Cafe. So now your choices are really limited to Scat Cats Bar and Grill. Marty Grogs has a few snack items out by the pool. But your main way of dining is going to be the Sassagula Floatworks and Food Factory. I mean seriously, they have a couple of Cajun things, but besides the cheeseburgers that I probably shouldn't have, and the beignets that my endocrinologist says I definitely shouldn't have, well the Sassagula Floatworks and Food Factory just isn't all that exciting. It is, however, almost always crowded. And if your endocrinologist says it's okay for you to get beignets, I'll let you know ahead of time, you're going to have to wait. The only meal I made sure I was there for every day was breakfast in the omelet shop and got my custom made omelet. But even if you don't eat any meals up at the Saskola Floatworks, you owe it to yourself to at least go up and check out the decor. Aside from some of the most awesome lights on property, they also have a very large collection of Mardi Gras masks. And since it's supposed to be the float works, they also have a large collection of float pieces. And some of the oddest artwork I've actually ever seen. Gene and I both took pictures of this one because, see, well, it's a firefighter. When it comes to food selections, they do have some Cajun food like a mufalata sandwich and some jambalaya with cornbread. But they also had favorites like fried chicken, barbecued ribs, and, of course, cheeseburgers. But to be perfectly honest, the only thing really worth getting there are the desserts, whether it's the strawberry pie, a nice praline or, yes, the Mickey-shaped beignets. All of which are excellent. And really, if you can't find anything you like, it's just a short walk or a boat ride down to Riverside. When you come out the back door of the float works, you're on Rue de Bega. Get it? It's a Rue de... never mind. Anyway, this is also the home to the Jackson Square store. They have everything you could want in a Disney store including those Entenmann's Donuts, you know, for breakfast. And right next door to that is the South Quarter Games Arcade, filled with, well, arcade games. So, come on, let's go inside here. Back in the day, I was really good at air hockey when we played at the Ocean City, New Jersey boardwalk. Is it just me, or do most of these arcade games look like they come with their own seats? Well, that's not very wheelchair friendly. I guess I just won't be able to have that rematch of Space Invaders with Jean. Oh darn. I mean, she was kicking my butt anyway, but uh, let's not worry about that. Hey, a photo booth! And those relaxomatic chairs are actually empty for a change. You can go all the way through the South Quitter Games Arcade, and the doors there take you out into the main lobby they'll dump you out right next door to the Jackson Square store again. But as long as we're in the lobby, let's stop over a check-in and pick up a scavenger hunt card. When we were here back in June, you were looking for these musical notes they had around and identifying the movies that went with the notes. During this day, it was time for the winter scavenger hunt, and you had to try and find the snowflakes that were scattered all over the property. And I think the hardest one to find was Chip and Dale. At the end, you, you get a button. And, since we're already outside, let's head over to the playground. If you're in a wheelchair, you have to come all the way to the far exit here because they kind of forgot to put a wheelchair ramp in, I guess, when they built it. And they put in access afterwards. But there's plenty of things for the kids to do. And look, there's another snowflake. 
There are also parks all over the place, like Beignet Square. Yeah, I know. I'm not making up these names. That's where they have the movies under the stars every night. Oh look, it's frozen again. And at the far end down there, you can just about make out the fire pit, home of the Cajun campfire. They have that every night. If you head just a little further west, you'll go to Beauregard's Square. Yeah, like Beauregard. It's home to the wonderful frog fountain, although we did notice this time, there's a missing frog. And right in that same area, you'll find Fido Fountain. Ironically, the only one of the parks that doesn't actually have a fountain. I mean, the park down by us, by building number one, had a fountain, and I couldn't find a name for this park anywhere. And like all the parks, and just about any place else there is to just sit down and relax, well, all of them are smoking areas, so if you're allergic to cigarette smoke, the parks may not be the best place for you to head. And if you start seeing a bunch of crocodile musicians, it can only mean you're headed to one place. So, let's say we head over to the pool and we'll meet Scales the Sea Monster. Scales' presence actually starts outside of the pool area over by Mardi Gras, and then he works his way up and down all through the pool area. Oh, and look, there's a handicapped lift chair right there. Right away, it becomes obvious that the best way to follow Scales is, well, from the pool. And look, there's another one of those crocodiles. Hey, there's the rest of the band over in the clamshell. French Quarter is kind of a musical place. Scales finally shows his head and King Neptune's riding him. And it turns out, Scales is a water slide. Well, at least this part is. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the really cool kitty pool. After a tough day of sea monster hunting, the best place you can go is Mardi Gras, the pool bar. For an adult libation. They also have an outdoor seating area where, after you're done at the pool, you can just get a to-go pizza over to Sasagola Floatworks. You know, just send over the guy in the wheelchair. Hey, wait a minute! Over on the backside of Marty Grogs, you'll find laundry on the Libby. So you can, you can do your laundry! Yeah, that's right, do the laundry. Or instead, you can go around the corner to the hot tub. Which, I gotta tell you, sounds way better than doing the laundry. You know, after all the noise of the pool, there's one sound I really love. And just like we talked about over at Riverside, they have carriage rides nightly at French Quarter also. Really, it is the Riverside carriage, and it runs through both Riverside and French Quarter. And in order to get it, you gotta go over to Riverside. And there are other activities that you need to run over to Riverside for. Like catch and release fishing over at the fishing hole on Old Man Island. And if you want to rent bikes to check out the whole resort, that's over at the Riverside Levy office. And as long as you're there, you might as well pick up a scavenger hunt card for Riverside. You know, it's scenes like these that make French Quarter one of my favorite resorts. I really do love the New Orleans style architecture here, the wonderful grounds, and the fact that there's no drunks laying around. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the wedding. Now you've met my family before in previous videos, and you've also met my eldest son. Well, he got married, and they decided to do it at Disney. And there's Gene headed to the wedding chapel right now, and let me tell you, it was gorgeous. Disney really does know how to do weddings. I mean, look at this cake! And they took the aisle runner and moved it over for the bride and groom's table. I mean, what's cooler than Disney's projections? Yeah, the food was great and everybody seemed to have a really good time. We were at the Robin and Maid Marion table. Of course, there are some requirements for every wedding.
tour. I mean, she didn't get to go to the wedding. She can only lay at home and dream about your likes and comments. And I hope you liked the video too, and that you might choose to subscribe to the channel. And remember, if you do subscribe, don't forget to click on that bell icon. That way you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.